Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Soul Purpose Leaders. Today, I have an amazing, beautiful soul that is, she is one of a kind to actually know and to actually be with or be around with. Now, I am so happy and I'm so grateful to be here today. And also, we're here as normal to actually show you the beauty of others, what they do in their world, but also what they help other people around as well. Now, I would like us to actually see ourselves and also see what others are actually doing for themselves. Now, today I have an amazing woman. She is the mother, okay? She is a beautiful person. She's a mom of nine, nine children, live in London, United Kingdom. She attended college and university and walked a different path in life with a lot of experiences. She also worked with children in her own home, helped some many people walk clear path in life, organized uh, organized own workshop and events to empower children and women. Fatu Kasamabayo. She is an NLP practitioner, neuro-linguistic programming, and a life coach for women who want to get rid of self-sabotage and build inner confidence, self-love to be fearless, fearlessly empowered, and embrace their feminine energy. Masha Allah. I am so grateful to have her here today, and I am so happy to actually show you this wonderful lady, what she does, who she is, and what she's up to in this life. And hopefully you're going to love the way I love her, okay? And I wish you all the best. So before we go further, I would like to welcome Fatu. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much for inviting me today. I am really, really grateful for your invitation, mashallah. Um, and I'm so happy to see you. I haven't seen you for so long, mashallah. I'm so grateful, I have to say. Um, my name is Fatu Kasama Bayer. Like you said, I'm a life coach. and NLP practitioner. I work different path in life. Okay, I have a lot of experience, like you said, and I love helping women to find their own path in life. You know, to overcome self 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 sabotage, to be the best version of themselves. You know, so just like you said, Alhamdulillah. So I'm here. You know. Because of my experiences, I've really, it really taught me a lot in life, okay? It really made me really know who I really am. And I think this is why I like to help people to really find out their true, authentic selves. And without that, you won't go forward in life. You always have a stop, a break, a setback. And when you learn that, it will just help you to walk on your path. <laughs> Amazing, and thank you for that, Fatu. Now, my first question is, you've never, you're not always like this as an NLP since you were born. I wanted to know when you were young, okay, you are a young lady, what dreams did you have for you? What dreams do I have in life? No, 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 when you are young, at the age maybe 15, 16 just... to 18. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Repeat again, my network is very poor since I'm in Gambia. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So I'm, asking, I'm asking, um, when you are the age of um mm -hmm. when you're the age of 16, 17 at that at that time. What were your dreams and desires in life? Mm -hmm. 
Well, at that age, you see, this is the thing. We all dreams. I had a dream, okay? I kind of forgot what the dream was, okay? But yes, my dream in life and the true me was that I become somebody. Somebody that will always be caring for people. Somebody that will always understand people. So this is always my dream. Okay, but I never knew what that was. So my dream is to be, always to be me. But I never even knew what that was or how to be it. So at the age of 16, I remember saying to myself, um, I want to get married. Um, when I get married one day, I want to have two children. Okay, and that was my dream. Okay, and I end up having, mashallah, nine beautiful children. Okay, Marshall. so my dream was always to just love people and care for people. But now that I realize what that is, but I, back then I never knew how to find that, what to do to have that, but it was just a dream that I never knew that I had to wake up from that dream and walk on that path. Thank you so much, Fatu, and that's amazing. And most of the time, it happens. Um, it's Adana, that is um, Islamic calling for prayer. And um, it's uh, everywhere. In Africa, you'll hear it more <laughs> than in England. <laughs> um, I would like to ask you as well, as you can see, mother of nine, she's very big. Sorry, <laughs> the job never ends. <laughs> I want to ask you as well, Fatu. Now, it's okay, Fatu, it happens. Mm -hmm. um, this is the fun of being a mother and uh, looking after children. Yes, I'm all ears. <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you, when you knew that you wanted to help others, That's was right. it really <laughs> like, um, were you helping others, but mm -hmm. or in a healthy way or in an unhealthy way? in a healthy way. Because when you say about helping somebody, they, that person really need to need help. You can't help somebody who's already there or help somebody um, who doesn't know where they wanna be. When I'm helping somebody, it's somebody, it's more, I call it help, but it's more, I call it help, but that help is more of a telling them that, helping them to find their own direction. They already know their direction, or sometimes they don't know their direction. but they have the inst inst intuition that they want to be somewhere, they want to get to somewhere, but they don't know how to. So that is the way, that's me coming there and said, hang on a minute, tap into it, it's there, it's locked. But all you need to do is to open it. So I'm there kind of showing them to help them find the door that they need to unlock in their life. And those are more of people that like um, basically that you know, um, need help could be maybe in their lifestyle, you know, or their mindset, you know, um, I mean, healthy lifestyle. And, you know, because I've been into different paths and that path also is included to my own healthy way, you know, where I become like um, ill and, you know, um, I can say that some have a lot of anxiety, I mean, have a lot of anxiety and also, um, you know, um, um, physical pains, all of these things. So I've been there. I know it. You know, I walk the, sh you know, the walk. I wore the shoes. So if anyone that is in that path and don't know, you know, how to go through that or how to walk around that, then that is where I come in. 
Now, when you say the words that um, when you went through yourself, the health and anxieties and having all those problems. Now, can you please expand it in a way that when you're going through that, what was the key things that you mm -hmm. actually realized what was happening to yourself and what sorry, sorry i just got interrupt, in, 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 interrupt, interrupted could okay. you just repeat that again sorry. what i'm asking is that when you're going through your own health issues and you're going through anxieties you're going through all these difficulties that your own personal way how did you manage your um, sorry, sorry if I can. the interruption so, kind of um lowered my um my volume for some reason Sorry. that I can't hear you properly. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Say again. Let me see if I can hear you. So I'm asking is that when you when you are going when you're when you went through the illness at the time. Can you hear me? Yeah, go on. So I was asking, when you're going through your illness and anxiety at the time, what did you, what did you actually? I can't really hear you. Okay, don't worry. I'm typing for far to to under to the question. Okay, I've got the fun thing about Zoom call, you can do chat and they will get it. So if she couldn't hear my question, I've texted it to her and now she will answer that question. Thank you. Yeah, so I've got it. So what do I do to help myself? Okay, first of all, I had to believe, I had to understand um, what was going on with me, okay? I had to know what kind of anxiety I was going through and also to really um, make a difference about um, what are the trigger points. Yes, where does the trigger come from? What kind of feeling do I have? What kind of anxiety do I have? Why am I having anxiety and what time does the anxiety start? So I had to go through all this myself, okay? And I have to read a lot about anxiety to understand what anxiety. At first, when I was having this anxiety, for many years, I've never understood what was the anxiety. Why was I having the anxiety? You understand? Because many people don't even realize when what is anxiety. The difference between anxiety and um, sometimes being upset and... Yes, so, thank you. So, you know, all of those things, I had to really um, know myself, know why I'm having what I'm having. What problem brings my anxiety? Whether when I'm happy, I have anxiety. Whether when I'm happy, I have anxiety. Or when I'm trying to say something to somebody. You know, all of these things. I have so many different issues that bring up my anxiety. You know, even fear brings up my anxiety, but I didn't even know. So those are the things that I first kind of um, discovered, understand. Then I start to take the step to really help myself. You know, and the help that I took was that um, I had to jot things down, okay? Write down the things that come up to my mind. Because I'm a person that mostly I say to myself, okay, I'm fine, you know? I try to cover up everything to be, um, to be okay, to be somebody that everyone that thinks that is fine is a hero. But not knowing that while I was doing that, I was kind of eating up myself and anxiety was overtaking my life. 
Okay, so the step that I did was um, read the things that, um, write about the things that make me feel nervous, things that make me feel scared, that to get the anxiety, when I, when I get like even a uh, panic attack, what was causing me to have the panic attacks. So when I was trying to help myself, the first thing that I do is like, I had to stop so many things. One of the things was part of pleasing people. Whether people believe it or not, is one of the um, symptoms to um, anxiety. You know, because you're pleasing people a lot. You you want to do what people um like. I don't am not like that. You want to do like what what people um love uh, about you, not what you love about. You. I needed to, to take control. And also, when I knew that. Um, in what point of my life that made me feel anxiety and where it was coming from, I had to really stop those things, you know. Sometimes stop the things that people don't want you to stop, but what you know is good for you to stop. So all of these things I had, I had to do, you know, to help myself. But first I had to understand what is it, what making me to feel that way. You know, it's also my mindset. You know, I had to really work on my mindset a lot, you know. Part of your mind, this is the, this, this job, it required a lot of your mind, your awareness. So I had to be a lot of um, awareness, be conscious with myself, with my feelings, with my thoughts, you know, all of these things that I had to um, put together to work on myself. That's beautiful because a lot of people are going through a lot of that. And also one of it is that uh, people pleasing. Now that can have anxiety in its own. Now, would you tap touch bases on uh, like two, di or two different things about people pleasing and how far it can actually lead to anxiety and making you feel that it actually interfere with your daily activities or da your daily routine? Yeah, well, for me, one of the other things that are with the people pleasing is like always care about what people say. Okay, this is the big thing. What people say are big things that make people happy. So if people aren't happy, you start feeling bad about yourself. You start blaming yourself. Keep thinking that it's all about you. Okay. The other thing is like okay, um, you know, it's about you know you want you want people to you want to be what people want you to be. Okay, walk the shoes that people, the walk that people want you. If you're not walking certain way the society want you to walk, is a problem. Now what you do, you beat yourself up for it. You blame yourself, you criticize yourself, you sabotage yourself. And because of this, that's why I say like help women to, you know, to help themselves overcome um, self sabotage uh, People sabotage themselves, even with your look. I never have a problem with my look, by the way. It's not about, for me, it wasn't about my look. It's about what people want me to do for them. Okay? What people, and how much people expect from me. That where I don't even find help from people. Because already I think people think I'm a hero. People think that I can do things. Okay? Fat not needs any help. She's brave already. So I just go and go and go over the limit. So I never have to think about myself. And this is part of people pleasing. When I want to say something, I'm thinking about, okay, will these people like it? So I always have to adjust the words that I say to people. In a way, you know, it's good. There's a sunnah of Rasulullah you, Sallallahu You know, you always have to filter your words, but don't filter it so much so that you, you carry a burden with yourself. It's a balance. Life comes with balance. If you don't know this balance, Take all the burden that God has not put upon you, but it's what you put upon yourself. Exactly. And this was a big anxiety for me. That that is is different from the fear of you know of. Thank you so much, and uh, it is true. Um, I've been told that um, if you have a self care or if you love yourself, it's actually part of being selfless and self self that you have to do that for yourself and it's all right to do that mm -hmm. now would did it come easily when you set your mind and say okay these things is not working for me pleasing other people but now i want different how did you start that journey 
it doesn't, you know, like it's good that you mentioned it because today I was talking to my one of my co-wife, co-wives, and I was telling, explaining to her about this 21 days mindset, right? And how people think it's easy, but it's not as easy as we think. Changing something about yourself is a journey itself. Okay, the journey that you need to take to get to somewhere that will take you three hours, four hours, is not that kind of journey. It's a long journey. 21 days, one month. Two, two months, three months is a journey, okay? That 21 days that we talk about mindset, 21 days, is a struggle journey. Because when you start something, you will automatically see that you're going back to it. But it's about how you strive and, um, you know, um, challenge yourself, discipline yourself to going back until you rectify that thing that you want to you know, you want to rectify that thing that you want to get as a habit because you, your mind already get used to something, right? Now, how are you going to take that off your mind to change it to something else? Is a mind training, you know, is an exchange of habit. You take one habit already, is another habit. Is that that you need to really know how to really understand you, you know, like what you said about the self-caring. You want to care for yourself because that's what it is. Is an exchange of caring yourself. Because when you were doing this, you weren't caring for yourself. It wasn't about you. It was always about other people. Mm. Okay? You undermine your own self. So in this journey, it's about now you. Doesn't mean you forget other people, but because also you care about you, it says that you mean that you care about those people. Okay? So it takes time. It's a journey that you need to, you messed up, you go back to it again. You messed up, you go back to it. It's ask focusness awareness to be really conscious of the action because if you're not conscious of that action you can't work on yourself you can't work on it so it is a journey it's not as simple as people say and that is the honest truth guys okay this is it this is the reality of life now you mentioned there poor wives now let's talk a bit about that in a way of um yourself as a woman as a mother mm -hmm. and now as a um as a wife having other co-wives wasn't that a bit of um mindset you have to train yourself yeah that is that itself is something that i you know i always wanted to talk about on my youtube mm -hmm. channels which i haven't got there but it's something that you need to adopt in. It's, it's, a, it's a joint lifestyle, okay? My own experience. People have different experiences when it's come to a wife, okay? In our society, many people believe that you have to be doing ever since I've been having a wife. I live with them, you know, and, and serve different people. So that means I have been living with different people, with different personalities, different living styles, okay? and adjust and adjust so there's some habit that i took then i want to come of it that itself it took me a journey up to today so each person that come into my life i, have, I used to live with them i have to come to live with them. and a mother i have to also train my children to talk those people take those people as as like a, a real auntie or like a mother okay i have to train my children as well as myself to have a very um um how do, how do i call it again a very um understanding about that lifestyle okay because when children come into this yes they have a lot of questions there's certain things that's come about they don't understand like example the um sharing the nights okay i have to like today like and, and also cooking like today one of my groups said to me my night me also said to me oh mommy it's almost your turn now, okay, for the two nights. And I said, yeah. She said, but it's never, you never had, you know, had um, this turning thing. So I said, but what do you mean? But she meant about the cooking, okay? When I have my two days, I have to cook. She said, but you never. So things do change. And you have to go along with it. But then in the, within the, um, the polygamy uh, itself, one thing that I do learn is that, you know, you always need to check yourself. You need, you always need to learn how to focus on yourself because otherwise what happens is you focus on the other people. Your focus change. 
to your poor wife. You think about what they do. What are they wearing? And this is so always trying to be conscious about. I'm not there to compete with no one. I am me. Okay. I love who I am. I love my personalities. Though I'm not saying that I don't have like, you know, bad habit and things like that. Or to say that I might not be, you know, have some jealousies and stuff. But all of that is about being aware of it. Okay. To have my own authority because there's a lot of competition. Some of us do compete and not know that they're being competing. And this can have a lot of impact in your mindset, a lot. Because sometimes it can make you, some women focus more on, you know, um, who the man love more, most, right? Who the man pay more attention to and all of this thing. And you kind of lost your own self with that. So for me, I've learned a lot with that. Focus on yourself and everything else will attract back to you. So I've learned a lot. You know, it, it's been a hell of a journey for me. But today, I think that I have learned a lot and I'm so grateful. Alhamdulillah. Have I answered your questions? I know. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> now we know that uh, in islamic it's uh, allowed to have up to four wives yes <laughs> but um i also uh, because as a coach i get women who come to me and they're struggling with the polygamy especially with the jealousy mm -hmm. or yeah. with the understanding of um what about me? They're thinking about themselves of this man doesn't do what they, what the Sunnah says, yeah. or this man is not doing the right thing. So what advice would you give someone who are going through that? Yeah. Yeah. It happens a lot. There's a lot of, there are a lot of those things that are going on, like where, you know, the man has to be just, um, because a lot of people do say the woman, the man has to be just, between the wives, okay, and um, and the being just is come to their living condition. It comes to their nights, you know. All of these things has to be. Um, they have to be just. And now, the, now this society, many men, most men, um, find it very hard to be just. I could say some of them don't even know how to be just. They think they have been just. So they, again, that comes to the um, how human being unperfect. Okay, and sometimes women also um, have an impact in that. Women also have an input in that. Okay, because if every woman, all of us that fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and all of us that know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that, um, um, uh, um, how do you call it again, um, permitted for men to have um, more than one wife, two wives, three wives, and Allah Himself, He said that it would be very hard for the men to truly be just. Okay, it's very hard for them, no matter what they do. But if the women do understand that, because this is what I say, look, I tell it to my poor wife, okay? I said, look, for what I understand myself is this. You are you. I am who I am. I can never be you. No matter how much you try, you can never be me, even if you try to be me. So why not just be you? The reason why I say this, okay? I come to think of this. I said, okay, there's four here. It's like having four different dishes, okay? Yes, four different dishes. You want to try all of them. I'm sure you will eat each one of them, but there would be one of them that you would just say, mm, and just bite your finger, but you might just be quiet. Okay, to get these things to understand that and to get those women to understand that you don't have to kill yourself because you think the man wants you more, or the man this, because the reality is, Himself, he knows. Allah knows. But if you're trying to, you know, to fight over that, hey, you're going to kill yourself. And the most important thing is that always fight for what is right by you. And also, because I have I my children also see all of these things. Mm -hmm. So I have to mentor my children within this as well, in this. Hey. That's very true, Fatu. And also wanted to say that uh, in Islam, that um, God promised us if we put Him first and mm -hmm. we don't put other people or things uh, before Him, 
then everything will go smoothly. But if we do put another human or things, they will we'll betray be us. And so this is something that we need to remember for Love ourselves. Me. Now, Love another me. thing is that Fatu, you've been working mm -hmm. in a different areas of your life and you've committed yourself mm -hmm. through coaching and speaking and mentoring. Tell us a bit of your journey when mm -hmm. you started to actually say, this is why I'm born in this world to actually help people or women to do greatness in their lives. What made you realize that this is your dream and what steps did you actually take for you to achieve this? Um, well, like you said, I've been through a lot in life, okay? As a wife, I struggle. As a mother, I struggle. I struggle with myself as well, okay? And that, it took me many years, okay? I remember in 2014, someone was talking about mindset, mindset, when I started my network marketing mindset, I'm like, wherever they say something, I'm like, yeah, Paul, we already have that, yeah? Why are you guys were talking about it? But we always have that. I'm like, yeah, but you're saying, you're saying you need to walk on it, but you already have it. But not knowing that, yes, we have it, but we don't realize what we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. all, I used to talk a lot about psychology. Abdullah, Abdullah. I talk about a lot like um, psychology. I have, you know, one of our, this friend that used to study psychology. And every time she come, she come along to me, psychology says, psychology says that I remember she's telling her, but Abdullah, put him down. I remember always arguing with her, telling her, look, but we are psychology, okay? Our mind is a psychology. But we know this, but we, I see this, I've done this, and that, but why are you telling me you study it? But what I then find out is that we all have a psychology mind, but some of us need to really go and study it. Right? Some of us, certain things naturally comes to us. For me, I believe, and I am telling you, even though then I started the coaching and stuff, but now today I'm talking to you, I believe even more that my purpose today of what I've learned through all of this journey up today I'm talking to you, I know that my purpose is that I have different skills, different creativities that I need to put out there. That is what God has given. Okay? And all of this is that is something that I have to work around people. It's again about me working with people, helping with people, come to being a mother, right? Come to being a wife, co-wife, come to being like cooking, you know, making things. That is me. I've never found out found about those things about me. So when I started my journey, it's all about, I remember the first time ever I knew that I have to do something is when I gave birth to my ninth child. That was when I really broke down, okay? In 2014, yes, I started something. I was going a lot of pain, physical pains, um, my anxiety, everything. And I remember telling myself, I need to do something, find something. So at that point, I was going to um, product. Guys, I've got a lot of, mashallah, children around me and... <laughs> I do it as multitasking, all of this, and it's the nature. Okay, you hear all of it. <laughs> <laughs> we are so pleased and happy to hear that. And it's okay, because yes. as women, we do, we do have to have multiple skills to actually do what we need to do. Now, Fatu, I am so happy and I'm so pleased, but end of the day, you actually went and gone through that you are you you came from motherhood you came from as a daughter sister and then go to motherhood and then became a mother of nine children mashallah and having co-wives even and then yes. having illnesses and after that moved to actually started your own coaching business and you still hasn't been stopped you started to going about food now you are doing into restaurants right. now, what are you doing exactly tell us fatu well, um, I've been doing my skin care products, 
I've started, like you said, being a mother, using my own potential as a coach, speaking, helping people from where I've started to where I stopped, well, never stop going through challenges in life. But yes, and then coming to where I just thought of one day out oh, making soap, skin, because I love everything to do with care, okay, self care, being the mind, being the body, being your your inner self, what you eat, all of this. So I just wanted to know all about this, okay. So now that I'm also baking stuff, like making like cushions, cakes, um. What do you call it? Um, uh, what do you call it again? Uh, puddings and um, you know, stock paratas, pancakes, anything you know, crepes, all of these things, right? I make it myself, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm here now trying to open my own snack house, okay? I'm just gonna launch it in the next two weeks, inshallah. And somewhere down the line, also, I'm going to open my own restaurant where I'm going to be doing like, um, um, it's going to be like FKB Moringa the Healthy Grill House. Okay. So I'm, so I'm just, I'm just a mom, wife, printer. Okay. I don't know <laughs> what to put it, but I just, I just realized because you know, people say, do one thing. Okay. Yes, you can do one thing, muster it and go to the next. Play. <laughs> All right. And just go for it. <laughs> mashallah, so, mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> so you're opening uh inshallah your own uh, snack bar in um senegal or is it gambia gambia gambia, gambia inshallah and the restaurant as well in gambia or uk yes. in gambia in gambia in okay gambia. mashallah <laughs> So everyone, whoever is listening to this, whoever is watching this, get yourself a ticket and go to Gambia to taste Fatu uh, beautiful food. It's just amazing. It's really remarkable. And um, Fatu, so this is coming up for you. How are you keeping up with everything? How do you do that, Fatu? Um, well, this is again, um, what I want, okay? Mm. I'm managing with all my, I'm managing myself, basically. When I say myself, myself, as far to myself, my own feelings, my emotions, everything. That, now, this, when, in the morning, when I think about, oh, I need to bake, okay? I need to cook this, you know, for my family, for people, and this, it just got me up, okay? Yeah. Then, uh, with my coaching, because, I have to say, guys, I quote my children every day. Every day I quote them, okay? <laughs> Sometimes they want to stop me, okay? And so, you're right, Barke, how do I do it? Sometimes I ask myself, how do I do it? How did I do it, okay? Because I have people telling me, they like my mom and all of them, oh, you don't call me there, you don't call me, I haven't called you calling me, someone else to tell I said to myself, you know what? And this is what I talk about, this people pleasing. I just put the stop button there. You know, I said to myself, I said to myself, you know what? I am not going to feel bad anymore. Okay? Because I'm telling you, that being a biggest anxiety for me. Mm. Not calling the people that want you to call them. Okay? I now put myself into the time where I have to call whoever I need to call in the family. Okay? Where I go every time to go and, you know, manage my stuff. And I have days. I have my two days also that, which is my time with my husband, because as a co-wife, everyone have their two days, okay? So my two days is when I, where I, where, when I do my cooking for the family, when I spend with my husband and all the, my children, I spend time with them every day, okay? But like, you know, with him, so I have that time. During that time, I don't do, I don't do certain things, okay? It's just that my two days okay now after that i've got four days where i go and check my shops you know what needs to be done at that time i'd also doing my catering course online 
So I have my time where I do that as well, you know, and also the time where I do my cookings in the evening, more I do my bakings, my cooking and things like that, right? Now with the coaching also, when I have clients, the day is on time that I need to do it, okay? And that is Monday on Zoom call online, okay? Marshall, and yeah, so it's just that how I manage my timings and, you know, it can be like, I'm overwhelming, but I need, I learn to just relax myself when I, you know, feel overwhelming and just, you know, take a deep breath and just rest myself. Nowadays, I listen to my body a lot, you know, because it's all about listening to your body as well, not overtiring your body like I used to do. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah, Fatu. <laughs> It's so true because end of the day, we have to keep an eye on ourselves and what our body says because we need to listen. And if we don't, there will be consequences. Now, Fatu, where should people actually find you? Well, you can find me on Facebook, Fatu Kasama Bio. You can find me on YouTube, Mommy Case Talk Show and instagram because instagram i've got quite a few pages guys okay i don't want you to be confused <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm working on that i'm working on that because recently i've just created my in my um, um snack house because snack house is actually a shop okay where i sell all of these things like coffee moringa drinks healthy drinks and you know um you know, healthy bakings, all of this, you know, these things. So I'm just, you know, getting people to get to know it before I kind of launch it. So that's why I opened that, you know, and it's called FKB um, Snack House. Yes, so that is the one that I've recently um, trying to get some followers on that. And I also got um, Fatu Kasama Bio, which is my, um, um, you know, the coaching page um, where I, you know, influence people and so on. So, yeah. Um, and I'm still writing my book about the anxiety, okay? <laughs> Mashallah. When do you know it's going to come out? Um, I haven't put um, exactly deadline yeah but i'm working on it okay inshallah. Yes, I'm, we can't I'm, wait I'm on it. we can't inshallah. wait to to hear that <laughs> now i would like to ask you if today was your last day in this earth and if you could share a message to the to the world what would that message be that message would be don't waste your energy on anyone else but yourself. Don't give your energy to no one else, okay? And just be your own authentic self. Do the things that will make you connected to your creator, whatever that might be. That is my message to the world. And if today was my last day today, I would have said that everyone to forgive me and I forgive everybody. That will always be my biggest message. <laughs> <laughs> Never hold resentment for anyone or for yourself. And that's a beautiful message for you, especially for women, especially even yes. men, whoever they're watching, it will give them, it will heal them. It will give them guidance. And also it's something that they can resonate or they can think about and reflect on their lives. So thank you so much. Fatu. Now, I also wanted to ask you, are you willing to come back to this show and actually share some more of your life's journey? I would love to. That is all about me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, I would Fatu. love to come back to the show. Thank you so much, Fatu, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Really. You're welcome. And um, is there anything you would like to say before we close for today? Well, I just would say that... Um, for us women, 
you know, I know that we say that we wanted to help women, and so I'm, I would like to say men need more help than we do as women. Yes. How because, come? because, especially in marriages, okay, we say us women, us women be feminine and also, you know, also, there I was talking to my daughter about it. Sometimes in this, men themselves, they're finding it very difficult to understand themselves. Because of this, they are treating women in certain way. So therefore, it's not just the woman need help, they need help. Because as women, we can't go without them as much as they can't go without us. And our children need them. They are their role model as well as we are their role model. So it goes both ways. I love that far too. And that is another topic we have to talk about. And for everybody else out there, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I wish you the best of the best. And until next time, we have to wait what kind of guests we're going to have for the near future, inshallah. And thank you, Fatu. Thank you for being here. And thank, thank you for giving us nice words. You too. Thank you so much. And have a wonderful night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.